right. On the ET Money Show, we make sure that we don't just talk about investing in mutual funds, but also help you meet the brain behind these funds. And in this uh, week's uh, Meet Your Fund Manager segment, we have on board Tudi Patacharya, who is the fund manager for Little Wise Large and Mid Cap uh, Fund. Uh, uh, let's take the conversation forward, understand uh, Little Wise Investing Mantra and Philosophy. Tudi, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining in. And I really want to get into details of uh, the fund that we just mentioned. But then before that, uh, uh, let's begin uh, uh, with this question. So uh, the year so far that's passed on global front, interest rate hikes are still on the cards due to the data that's coming out. Uh, domestic front to inflation has gone beyond the comfort level of RBI. Chances of the pause that we all were expecting looks very unlikely. Uh, six months from now, you think time's tough? First of all, uh, thanks Kavita for having me on your very popular show and uh, good evening investors. I would say that, I mean, uh, since the beginning of this year, we have been talking about the theme this year to be recession before rebound. In a sense, what we meant and what we still mean is that we expect recessionary conditions globally to persist, particularly the first half of this year, where uh, post which the economies might see different degrees of bottoming out and then recovery uh, subsequently. So yes, um, given that we have seen in the second half of last year, um, interest rate increase of close to 400 to 500 basis points globally. Um, in the first six to nine months of this year, we will see the impact of the same flowing through the economies. To various degrees, the impact will be, but there will be an impact, and that would make the economic conditions and markets quite volatile. All right, but then uh, 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 do you think corporate earnings are a bit of concern for you uh, going ahead? Because so far we've seen decent earnings season, but it's going to be troublesome, specifically talking about uh, the mid-cap sector. So I would actually characterize the earnings season a little differently. Rather than going large, mid and small, I would go with the sectors. And I would say that by and large, if you look at the earnings season that went by, uh, it was a great earning season from companies exposed to the industrials or the manufacturing side of the economy, but not so great from the companies exposed to the consumption side of the economy. And I think that might be a bit of the bother, particularly in coming quarters as well. So we think that given the government's focus on CapEx, given the fact that we are he heading into the uh, pre-election year, they would see CapEx and industrial side of the economy strong. But given that we have, other, on the other side, seen meaningful amount of interest rate in increases, which has resulted in higher inflation, that has hurt the consumption side of the economy and might continue to do so for the next three to six months. Uh, whether it's large, mid or small, uh, companies exposed to the consumption side of the basket, particularly the consumer discretionary uh, 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 element, could see a bit of, uh, uh, you know, soft conditions in times ahead. Rupee and the uh, FII's uh, outflow is quite a concern. And do you also think the DIRs are capable enough to hold the Indian market strong? I think at the moment, the biggest thing that I would hang my hat on is the earnings momentum that India, driven by its bottom up earnings drivers, uh, has brought on. I think that has uh, certainly the potential to keep the DIIs as well as FII interested. The issue that we are dealing with in the context of FII is that our relative valuation premium versus a whole bunch of other global markets are looking abnormally high. They look abnormally high beginning of the year. It has corrected to a certain extent, but it probably still does look a little bit on the higher side. We think that in the first six months of this year, that will probably be addressed well, through the relative performance of different markets. Um, but the bottom of drivers that we see in India we don't find in many other countries. And hence, we think that given the, uh, given the bottom of earnings drivers uh, that we see for the Indian economy for the next two to three years, it will keep both the DIIs as well as the FIIs with a long term outlook pretty much interested in the market. Let's talk about mid cap and small cap specifically. Now, do you think the valuations over here are stretched or are attractive right now to, to, to place a bet for a longer period of time, of course? We think uh, uh, that clearly mid-cap is a very decent place to be in the current uh, scheme of things. Uh, the medium-term drivers that I alluded to in the previous, uh, 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 and in answer to your previous question, which are like uh, uh, the India capex cycle, the bottling up of real estate demand, and also in terms of, uh, you know, indigenization of defense, etc., are going to keep the mid-cap segment of the market fairly attractive for investors who have a, a fairly long-term horizon, which is, five years plus. Uh, in the near term, we expect volatility, hence how we get into 
uh, these stocks or these funds could be kind of you know worth thinking about but for investors with three to five year horizon or longer mid cap certainly as an area we think would have a lot of uh, potential from a wealth creation standpoint let's talk about edelweiss large and mid cap fund what's your current strategy how is the play uh, uh, rolling out when it comes to large cap specifically so the first of all a bit on the positioning of the fund hmm. so this is targeted at those investors who are fundamentally risk averse uh, but are mindful of the fact that if they only take exposure to the large cap segment that might mean strict competition from the index fund point of view or they want to have an alpha layer on top of the large cap for such investors who are either new to investing or have a very risk averse kind of investment outlook this is a very good fund to take a look at because we have the large cap as the base and on top of it mid cap um, as a uh, uh, you know as a flavor on top which can add an element of alpha to the return for investors overall so that's a bit about the fund in itself uh, in the category in itself in the second part you mentioned that which are the sort of uh, you know uh, area how have we constructed the fund so i would say that broadly there are four themes that we are overweight on um, first of all we are extremely positive on the capex cycle that is currently ensuing in india driven by private sector we think that it will intensify over the next 2 to 3 years that's certainly one theme that we are overweight on in this fund the second area that we are overweight on is basically some of the bottoming up of the real estate sector which is overall both direct and indirect place we think they have a good are a good place to be from playing this this dynamic after almost a decade of consolidation post rera we are seeing this sector bottoming out and we will see this play out over the next 3 to 5 years as well the third is basically domestic cyclicals and by domestic cyclicals i mean a combination of financials and other sort of uh, uh, cyclical sectors like autos etc where we think that you know the earnings are bottoming out um, the the bad asset cycle is behind us and we have a few decent growth ahead growth years ahead so a combination of these three themes makes us feel that we have a bit of safety along with a bit of uh, 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 you know alpha creation angle attached to this particular fund through over holdings also to be for exactly is the fair strategy of constructing a portfolio for this particular fund could you please elaborate on that yeah so i think one of the things that we keep in mind is the risk averseness or categ- uh, categorization of this fund that we don't want to the beta of this fund is kept in such a way so that we don't go out of kilter we don't take undue risk and we give investors the stability but at the same time a little bit of kicker with regards to alpha from uh, from exposure to the mid cap st- uh, segment as well so net net uh, uh, you know decent exposure to sort of you know large cap plus a, a mid cap element makes us of about 30 30 or percent makes it a right ideal uh, candidate for investors who want to take a calibrated view onto indian equity or onto indian equity markets the risk management strategy that you've adopted because uh, uh, your large cap will obviously provide a certain level of stability but the kind of volatility you uh, incur due to mid caps how is that uh, maintained in the fund so basically you know uh, partly if you look at uh, the way the uh, the category is defined where 35 to 65% is uh, kind of you know a, a, a large cap and uh, uh, about 35% is bit cap so our exposure is limited to a certain extent um, uh, uh, so that we don't overdo the risk element in terms of exposure to mid cap part uh, the large cap part provides a bit of stability the mid cap adds a bit of element of a growth uh, uh, angle to the portfolio overall and makes us feel that uh, uh, you know the 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 risk uh, the or, or the uh, risk averse nature is captured by the higher uh, large cap component and the uh, alpha component is captured by the mid and small cap which could be up to about 35 or percent so uh, that's how the, that's one of the one of the ways to measure the risk of course on the other side we can take a calibrated view with regards to corporate governance with regards to um, profitability of the companies that we bet on and the valuation consciousness uh, these are the other risk mitigating characteristics we have which we particularly adhere to to make sure that we don't uh, 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 we don't fall into the trap of taking undue capital risk, which is one of the big things that we uh, uh, are mindful of, particularly when we are managing a, a fund in this category. 
Uh, I just want to focus on the theme and within that also the domestic cyclical recovery, you know, which has almost 54% of exposure. I mean, mm. you've obviously mentioned financial reality, uh, automobile and consumer durables mm. being a part of it. But then I also want to understand in few quarters, what's the mm. outlook for these particular sectors and the exposure call that you've taken. What are the positives over here that you're looking at? So domestic cyclicals is basically, in our opinion, the place to be given the bottom up earnings drivers that I've been talking of, uh, talking about so far. Um, we think that uh, over the, the the outlook based from the last three four years that we have seen, particularly the biggest segment of domestic cyclicals, which is financials. Over the last two to three years, the corporates in India have gone through a major deleveraging cycle. Uh, most of them are generating cash flows and are ready to invest from that perspective. Also, um, the bad asset cycle is kind of by and large behind us. Both of these makes us feel that, you know, in a, uh, that this particular, uh, that the country is kind of ripe for capital formation. And that makes me feel that the credit growth is likely to be fairly robust at about 30 to 14 percent. Um, and that makes us feel that overall, along with profitability, we think that as lending picks up to different parts of the economy, uh, uh, aiding the capital uh, uh, creation point of view, we think that financials is a decent place to kind of place your bets from a medium term standpoint, uh, whether it's large, uh, uh, large caps or to a certain extent mid caps as well. You are underweight on this fund in power, oil and gas and consumer. Uh, what are the red flags here? So um, we, could, uh, we don't want to call it a red flag, but mm -hmm. I think these are the areas where in our opinion, we could see mm -hmm. a bit of more of headwinds rather than tailwinds, particularly as we see through from what we see right now. We talked a bit about consumption. We think that overall in the last six months of calendar year 22, we saw a good amount of uh, uh, interest rate increase which is driven by high inflation ultimately. I think as that feeds through the economies, as that leads to higher interest rates for mortgages, et cetera, et cetera, we would see a bit of slowdown, particularly when it comes to consumption um, of, uh, uh, of the categories where, you know, which are rate sensitive or for that matter, where, 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 or for that segment of the population for whom the inflation makes a meaningful dent. Hence, we are underweight consumption. Oil and gas, Given that you have seen a peak in oil about a year or so driven by geopolitical crisis, um, our view is that that is likely to be more down rather than up. And hence, we have taken a more uh, dim view of oil and gas from a sectoral positioning standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, since we've dissected uh, uh, the fund's portfolio so much, I also want you to explain our investors uh, what kind of an investor should actually be investing in this kind of a fund because we do have separate large cap and mid cap category funds as well. This is a large and mid cap category fund. So what should be the placement in your portfolio? So uh, as I started with regards to the uh, positioning of the fund, uh, and that's probably a very important part to understand that for investors who are either new to equity markets who, or who are very risk averse, who don't want to sort of, you know, uh, uh, who, who want to have the cushion or the comfort of the large cap, but yet take a little bit of exposure to the mid cap segment, in other words, uh, to the wealth creation ang angle of the Indian economy, so to speak. This particular fund is very suitable for that segment of the investor who are probably, you know, historically a debt investor, are new to equity markets or equity allocation is low and particularly are quite risk averse, maybe age, higher age group uh, based investors and stuff like that. Uh, for them, this provides a right concoction of safety along with a little bit of uh, risk uh, in the form of mid cap, not on the, not waving towards the small cap, but more towards the mid cap. So very calibrated risk along with safety. Uh, as long as these sort of characteristics appeal to the investors, they should be interested in this fund. Tadeep, I'm done with uh, the questions on the fund, but then since I have you today on the show, I really want to ask this question to you and there is a slight panic within mutual fund investors also. I know that you will not talk on specific stocks and companies, but the recent uh, market fall and panic due to Adani Group of companies, uh, uh, you know, uh, the latest holding says uh, that uh, your fund has also certain amount of exposure in Adani Enterprises. Now, the question to you over here is, uh, uh, what exactly is your understanding uh, for uh, uh, behind this for, for this particular crisis the kind of maturity even the market has shown uh, what does uh, that uh, symbolizes what does that actually mean uh, and 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 why mutual fund uh, houses and schemes are still invested in such a controversial nature of company 
So first of all, let me correct yourself that more, uh, the fund that we talked about, the larger mid-cap fund and several different funds that I run on the active long-only uh, uh, strategies that it advise, none of those funds have any exposure, direct or indirect, to Adani Group. Uh, and I think most of the mutual fund industry has by and large escaped uh, 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 you know, uh, a certain group of uh, uh, companies or, uh, from, uh, for, from direct investment standpoint. And I think uh, this ultimately goes on to uh, show that active management works rather than just because the company is part of an index. We haven't taken an exposure just to cover our risk. We have taken an active view with regards to certain group of companies where we think, you know, uh, our views could be divergent with regards to where the index is, whatnot. So I think it's a thumbs up for the active management industry because majority of the mutual fund industry investors or mutual fund houses don't own uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the group names that you talked about. At the same time, particularly from our uh, uh, fund house standpoint, we have a strong uh, sort of philosophy oriented around forensics, corporate governance, etc., which makes us sometimes take more conservative bets, but at times like these, um, it makes us feel a little better given that we haven't taken undue risk in not only in large and mid-cap funds, but uh, for that matter, in any other long-only fund uh, of our fund house as well. Investor education, would you like to explain this to our investors as to why this kind of a crisis should not bother uh, uh, their decision or should not uh, change their decision to stay put in a fund or to uh, make an exit? Yeah, I think that's a very important question and hmm. uh, uh, the most important one to be addressed because at times like these, occasionally, investors' appetite and uh, uh, they start to question the ethos. But let me say that overall, given the fact that none of our funds have exposure to the group that you talked about, gives some comfort behind the due diligence that we do. Um, so first, trust the fund house that you invest with. Um, uh, 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 that uh, and uh, you will see over a period of time whether they have done the due diligence or not. And as long as they have done that, it is worth kind of paying attention to the uh, to the fact. Second, pay attention to the the process and the philosophy that they follow. We talked about uh, uh, you know corporate governance and important uh, as an important investment pillar of how we go about selecting investments. And third, you know bear in mind that in the in a, in a trillions of dollar economy, uh, you know. Certain instances like these are uh, really a drop in the ocean, which sort of you know keeps going on from here, uh, uh, from occasionally from point to point. So if the way I see this, this will make the governance of uh, regulator as well as uh, uh, the powers to be more stringent and would make markets more efficient and better for investors to invest in. So no need to really panic on the back of one isolated incident. This is not. This will not drive the economy into some sort of a tizzy or a recession or something of that sort. This should be treated in an isolation. Um, the details will come out as time passes, and I'm sure there will be pros and cons. But on net balance, this will not destabilize the themes that I talked about in the context of India, like capex, or for that matter, the real estate sector, or for that matter, um, the domestic cyclicals part that we talked about. So let that stay put. Stay invested and keep the faith in the fund house that you invested in. By and large, you will come out in flying colors. Right, that'll be a, a, such a wonderful thing. Thank you so much, uh, Tudi, for being on the show and guiding our uh, viewers through all of this. And on that note, let's take a quick break. And post that, uh, we'll help you understand uh, the exposure that mutual fund houses uh, have in the Dani group of companies. And uh, we have the latest data wherein uh, we will uh, dissect uh, the exposure that's been taken in the month of Jan. All of this after this break. Mm -hmm.